Hello there, Kyle Katarn here. Happy Star Wars Day, which happens to be a Wednesday, my droids. So let's read some Star Wars comics. How's it going, everybody? I'm so glad to see you all here in the chat. Jake, Persian dude, Holiday Punch, uh, Chadmiral Throne, the legend himself, Set Mayhem. Oh man, this is great. Um, and how about that music, right? I had to bust out the good, the good tunes. I almost felt bad about having to switch in because it was just getting to like the best part, a little jazz freestyle part. Oh man. Um, we got two titles today. The Crimson Rain continues with Star Wars, issue number 23. Is, uh, Zara finally gonna get hers? She was kind of turning the tables on the good guys in the end of the last one. Um, and then we have Star Wars Obi-Wan, issue number one. I'm so pumped for it. Coming right on the heels of the Kenobi trailer, which came out this morning. I just reacted to that as well. Oh, man. I'm really excited. Uh, Forlom, for LOM, was in the trailer, which makes me wonder if Zuckus is going to be around. And if Zuckus doesn't talk the way I do him, I'm going to be like, it's going to weird me out. So I really hope that somehow they gave him the same voice. <laughs> All right. Crimson Rain, Star Wars, number 23. The Tarkin's Will is a badass Star Destroyer, and I really want, uh, I really want to get, like, one of the Fantasy Flight Armada models and then, like, customize it. That would be really cool. Okay, the whole fleet's coming into bear. This is it. Big finale time. The Dawn Alliance. Cast Dameron has defied orders and led a team of rebels to rescue his wife, Shara Bay, from the clutches of the ruthless commander, Zara. With the entire rebel fleet arriving at the doorstep of Zara's Star Destroyer, the rebels believe they've got the upper hand. However, Commander Zara has her own plan in motion. That's right. The Pathfinders went totally Rogue One, decided to go back and rescue her anyway, because you can't stop love. But Zara saw it coming, because of course she did. She's Tarkin's protege, and she has a plan of her own. The Battle of Panesia. Imperial Star Destroyer, Tarkin's Will. We are one Star Destroyer, surrounded by the entire Rebel Alliance fleet. Three full Rebel divisions, including capital ships, with a fourth mobilizing on the planet below. Our armaments include 60 turbolaser batteries and 60 ion cannon emplacements, as well as 10 tractor beam generators. Our hangars hold the full complement of 72 TIE fighters, plus the standard array of shuttles, ground troops, and vehicles. They got nice Pelta class frigates in here and everything. And of course, all of you, nearly 10,000 dedicated Imperial warriors. The rebel forces outnumber us greatly in ships, soldiers, and munitions. We will not be calling for reinforcements. Zara is unhinged, but she's got a lot of charisma, and I gotta say, I do like her a lot. She's a great character. I was, I was, a, I was a real sucker for um, Grand Admiral Dalla in the Expanded Universe, and Zara is totally the other version of that, so that's probably why. We will not leap away. We will remain here, and we will fight. We will show these rebel scum how pathetic they truly are. We will destroy their ships, kill their people, and demonstrate to them the hopelessness of their so-called cause. Rebel ships are moving into blockade and attack positions, Commander Zara. Thank you, Lieutenant Gore. For now, we have nothing to worry about. The rebels are constrained in ways we are not. They will offer us a chance to surrender before they attack. Wait and see. I will provide orders in due time. Communications Division. You will have one of the most important tasks in the battle to come. I want this engagement recorded, set down, so it can be distributed far and wide. We will not just defeat the rebels. We will embarrass them, demoralize them. I would not be surprised if any surviving rebel ships simply disperse. Yes, Commander. Wow. Okay, now that is next level cockiness right there. What do you have up your sleeve? Our secondary task is to decapitate their so-called alliance. Our intelligence suggests their leaders are, not all pre are all present here today. Mon Mothma, General Sindula, Commodore Grek, Admiral Akbar, and, of course, Leia Organa. The arch nemesis. General Sindula's out there? The rebels took something from every single person aboard this ship when they destroyed the Death Star. It is past time that they paid for that. We will show them why we named this ship as we did. We will truly demonstrate Tarkin's will. Commander. Receiving a hail from the enemy command. They are offering us a chance to surrender. 
See, entirely predictable. Order the crew to battle stations, Lieutenant Gore. And to the officer at the helm, here is my first order. Dive. Sick. We're about to get some like fancy maneuvers from an, from an ISD, of all things. Set our heading for the rebel encampment on the surface below. Oh, shit. The rebels will assume we are making an attack run on our last fleet division on the planet, trying to destroy it before they mobilize to get off the surface, at which point we will flee into hyperspace. The Alliance will give chase. They will try to destroy us before we have a chance to kill their people. And here they are playing into her hand. The Rebels will follow us down into the planet's gravity well, at which point we will fire ion cannons. Oh, that's pretty brilliant, actually. Yeah, they follow them down into the lower orbit, get hit with ion, renders them useless, and then they descend and like they all crash into the planet. That's pretty brilliant. Fire ion cannons! The ion cannons will temporarily disable the Rebel Pursuer's systems. Engines, electrical, stabilizers, weapons. Ordinarily, any ships we hit would be simply would simply be set adrift. Vulnerable to attack, yes, but out of the fight, and in no further immediate danger. But because these ships are within the planet's atmosphere, well, what happens next should be obvious, even to those idiot rebels. They will fall. This is awesome. Look, the Nebulon B is just taking out one of the shield deflectors, just clunk on the ISD as it falls past it. Amazing. The ionized vessels will not be able to bring their engines back online before they hit the surface. And because we are directly above the Alliance encampment below, the Rebels are about to come to a very unpleasant realization. They just bombed their own people. Move! Move! We need to deploy these ships before it's too late! Ugh, the silhouettes of the capital ships just looming as they come down. Oh, this is terrible. Look, we've got an ISD, two Pelta classes, two CR-90s, and two Nebulons, and a GR-75. Yeah, that you don't want that landing on you. Jeez. Now the Rebel Commanders are faced with an unimaginable choice. The sort of decision that will haunt them until the day they die, no matter what they do next. There is no way the disabled rebel ships can be fully evacuated before they impact the camp on the ground. And there is no way the camp's personnel and equipment can be removed from the impact zone in time. So the choice they face is to either destroy their disabled ships now, or give their crews time to evacuate and risk some of them hitting the encampment. An impossible decision. There is no way to save everyone. So they will save the ones they think they can. The Rebel Commanders will destroy their own ships for us, and we barely had to lift a finger. You gotta, you gotta hand it to her. This is, this is a brilliant plan. This is the kind of thing that, like, yeah, the protege of Tarkin absolutely would come up with something this, this diabolical. And I'm absolutely loving these shots of the ships falling, like the Nebulon. Oh, this is just, it's very striking, isn't it? Tarkin's will. Detention level. Would you look at that? Stupid rebels. Firing on their own ships. Zara is a genius. It's like we're being commanded by Tarkin himself. I heard she trained under him. She was his protege. Just to remind everyone. <laughs> She's gonna destroy the whole rebel fleet all by herself. She's incredible. I can't wait to see what she does next. <laughs> Keep waiting, imp. Yes. All right, Kess, what's the plan? This is bad, Kess. That one, this one Star Destroyer against a whole Alliance flotilla, and it looks like we're losing. Must be the whole Rebel fleet gathered here. What's left of it? Whatever, I'm totally giving him Rick Sand's voice. What's left of it? Let me get this sliced. Find the cell where they're keeping Shara Bay. Looks like 52577. We'll split up. You head in, get Shara, and get her back here. The rest of us will stay here, take care of any Imperials who come wandering by. With any luck, they're all too busy watching the battle. Thank you, Frill. But then what? We left our transport behind with Starlight Squadron. How do you think we'll get out? 
Especially when the Alliance is probably about to blast this ship into atoms. One problem at a time, Sergeant Dameron. Go get your wife. I love it. The Pathfinders, like, are all ride or die with each other, 100%. Jake, it's they're they're being all tongue in cheek about whether that's Nick Sant, whether that's Rex, and I'm just going ahead. I'm just I'm just giving them the clone voice and making my decision known. But it's not officially confirmed. The rebels made their bet. They're sacrificing some ships in order to hopefully give that last division time to get off the ground. Huh. Not that it will matter. Helm, on my mark, pull out of the dive. Commander Zara, uh shouldn't we Mark? Man, the balls, the balls on this chick. She just, like, ioned the entire fleet, stuck him into the atmosphere, and now she's just buzzing the ships on the ground. She's literally buzzing them in an ISD. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is amazing. Thrusters on full. It's the sounds of rending metal. Oh my god. If Tarkin was alive to see this. Jeez. This is possibly the coolest thing I've seen someone do with an ISD since Talon Card, man. Oh, that was brilliant. Did I miss something? Did he. Do we miss the part where he finds her? Hold on. Go get your wife. That's disappointing. You feel that? Just now? I don't know what this ship just did. Can't imagine it's anything good, but... Before we blow up, there's something I need to say. Kess, you're an idiot for coming to rescue me. I love you so much. I love you too, Shara. I wasn't gonna leave you here. The entire Alliance would fall apart without you. And Poe needs his mom. I'd be a disaster raising him alone. Whatever. Don't be hard on yourselves. He turned out okay. Come on. We need to get out of here. Really? I thought maybe we'd stay. Food in the canteen's better than you'd think. <laughs> I got her. Now, let's wait. What happened? There was a rebel camp on the planet. Tenth Division, we think. This ship just... just torched it. Used its main thrusters like a flamethrower. All of them. Dead. And now the Star Destroyer is headed up to engage the rest of the Rebel fleet. We'll win the Alliance. We'll win. The Alliance has the ship completely outgunned. But I've never seen anything like that. That wasn't war. It was stone-cold murder. Maybe we can do something about that. Make sure this ship doesn't kill even one more Rebel. I've been living here for months. I know the Tarkins will, backward and forward. If you can blow some charges... here, then this ship should be out of the fight. We're on it. We can all go. We can set time chargers and then we can get to the maintenance hangar and steal a ship. I know the way. You two go ahead. That was the point, wasn't it? Getting you back out? Getting you back together home safe? But... Get out of here, lovebirds. Don't make this all for nothing. We'll see you when we see you. That's pretty noble. The Pathfinders are just like... Kess, Shara, get out of here. Your, your part of the mission is over. We can't risk further mission failure by having you stay on the ship any longer. Yeah, they just have each other's backs and you love it. Half the rebel ships are hanging back. They're too afraid to engage. They don't know what other tricks we might have up our sleeve. We will destroy their flagship and with it, most of their leadership. And then we will leap to light speed and head to the nearest Imperial garrison for refit. All turbo laser batteries. All fighters. Target home one. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, obviously, Home 1 is going to pull through somehow. But, I mean, this is this is a hell of a beatdown. That the entire um, Rebel fleet was able to amass, and they're just getting stomped by a single, like, deliberately damaged ISD. Man. Ah! How, how long you figure I should set the charges for? How much time do you think we'll need before they blow? Frill, I think we're all out of time. Let's just do what we came here to do. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Hold on. Tell me that's not Nick Sant falling to his death right now. 
Hold the... Come on. It's just these three, right? It's just these three that went with Kess. Nick Sant. And these two. Mmm. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Did they just kill Nick Sand on Star Wars Day? Come on. <laughs> Frel, I think we're all out of time. Let's just do what we came here to do. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Together? Together. Holy shit. Sacrifice. Internal sensors are indicating massive damage to the primary reactor. We're running on auxiliary power only. But how? We didn't take a hit. Our shields are still almost at full power. It appears to have been internal, Commander. And our shields are down, along with just about everything else. Infiltrators. Well, you had infiltrators. Okay, finally, Alliance, show some teeth. Commander, we have suffered catastrophic damage. We're working to get the hyperdrive back online, and we've called for reinforcements, but what are your orders? Abandon ship. Damn. Hardest thing she's ever had to say. Abandon the Tarkin's will. At this point, this is, this is going to mentally break her. At this point, she's just going to try and, like, you know, mutually assured destruction is going to be the only avenue. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. Look at these colors. Every once in a while, you come across a panel. You come across a page in a comic that I'm like, I just want this on my wall framed as a poster. This is... Ugh, love it. The Wreck of the Tarkin's Will. Home 1. Command Frigate of the Rebel Fleet. So wait, so she said abandon ship. Did she go down with the ship? We like they do this smash they keep doing these smash cuts cuz at the same time like we never actually saw Kess rescue Shara. I'm going to I'm going to presume that sh that Zara did not die just now because we didn't see that body. Home 1, Command Frigate of the Rebel Fleet. Good to have you back with us, Shara Bay. I don't know how you made it, but I'm so glad you did. Blame my husband, General Organa. Oh, I do. Believe me. He and I are going to have a little talk about chain of command. <laughs> but for the moment, let's just celebrate the victories we saw here today. And mourn our... General Organa, I apologize, but we're getting a hail. Command level. I think you might want to take it. Command level? But who... You haven't won yet, Leia. I'm still alive. Yes. Come and get me. Oh. <laughs> to be continued. Dope. Man, Zara just, she, she just doesn't quit. This is amazing. This was such an epic finale to, uh, to this arc. This was really, really cool. I knew they were going to do something epic with how they were going to get Shara off the ship and Zara's eventual showdown with Leia, but I thought this was it. I thought this was finally going to be it and it continues some more. Like... If we go, like, more than, like, another arc or two with Zara, she's going to become one of, like, Leia's long, like, biggest long-time nemeses in Star Wars. Like, these two, like, she's definitely, like, going to be at it with her longer than she did with Queen, Queen Trios, and I thought that that was the other, like, the biggest rival enemy, like, type person that Leia had had to deal with in the comics, but Zara's about to replace her. Yeah, no, that was absolutely awesome. Looks like we'll be getting uh, Dr. Afra number 20 next week. It's going to be really cool to continue that story and find out more about the uh, the ancient artifacts that are like simulating force powers. The Moff Gideon shot, what do you mean, uh, Chadmiral? Oh, just the way, oh, I see what you mean, just standing on top of the tie. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like Zara and Gideon would be really good friends. I just want to go back and marvel at this shot one more time because, oh my god, it's so good. Ah, love it. The colors, the color gradients, they're all different from each panel to the next. And then just a massive fireball explosion. And of course it reminds you of like when the Executor crashes into the Death Star 2 during the Battle of Endor. Yeah, this was a really, really cool comic. I really like this one.
All right, and now we're on to something completely different and brand new. Star Wars Obi-Wan, number one. I don't know how many of these there are going to be. Huh. And I don't know how directly it's going to tie in with Kenobi. But I'm already, I'm already on board. Look at this beautiful Phil Noto cover right here. Star Wars Obi-Wan, let's do it. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Younglings Challenge. The ultimate destiny of one of the Jedi's most renowned masters fast approaches. As he awaits an inevitable storm in the remote deserts of Tatooine, Obi-Wan Kenobi takes time to reflect on and record key moments of a heroic life long lived. Oh, cool, okay, I like that premise. Reminds me of the young Indiana Jones st stories. Tatooine, Western Dune Sea. A storm approaches. Not rain. Never rain. In all my time on this planet, I've witnessed rain only once. The rain came a mere four days after I arrived here, and it hasn't returned since. That was oh, almost twenty years ago now. Look at him. I like this art style, too. It's very, it's very rough, like very rough and hewn the same way you would be living rough on Tatooine, you know? It really, really fits. No, this is a storm of sand. A kind of dust that blinds and chokes if you're unlucky enough to be caught out in it. It seems clear now, across the desert. But that is part of the storm's mischief. Even the Jundland wastes are deceptively quiet. But in only a few hours' time, the storm will ravage all, raking even across the salt, raking even across the salt flats, enveloping the moisture farmers there. I pray they heed the same four warnings as I. I've learned to feel it. The drop in pressure, the kind of crack in the air, the weight of the heat, the peculiar whispers of the wind, the way my Iopi, Akani, lies down facing the walls of the hut. Eyes closed. Of course you have an EOP named Akani and you're all fond of him. That's, uh, Obi-Wan always loved animals. Yes, this will be a bad one. I prepare as best I can. Batten down the hatches. And then, I wait. I've always thought that Obi-Wan's little hovel was very, like, cozy feeling, even though it's in, like, the most desolate of places. Waiting. A task with which I am well acquainted. I don't catalog every sandstorm. I would run out of ink, out of paper, out of entire journals. But this one comes just as I sense some kind of... a change. A surge in darkness. One that honestly frightens me. And despite the heat, I feel the cold shiver that comes from being alone. I remember this kind of solitary shiver. It reminds me of this one time. Here we go. <laughs> the Jedi Temple, many years ago. <gasps> Garen? What were you hiding here? Garen, where are you? Wandering the halls of the temple late at night. This is some Harry Potter vibes. Garen. Out here to see the stars. Pretty tough on Coruscant with all the city light. Not if you know how to look. Dreams again. Nightmares. I can see his face. I have no memory of him. But in the dreams, I see him and I know it's him. What? What does he look like? He's... He's terrified, screaming in great pain. Something horrible is going to happen to him. I can feel it. You know you can't be up here. Or even out of our room at this hour. Obi-Wan, what I saw... It's real. It's going to happen. 
Have you told Master Yoda? He said, What I see may not be the truth. But what if it is? Then I need to save him. Garen, we're leaving for Elam soon. F for the gathering. I have to go. I have to go. Poor kid. That's awesome, though. He's about to pick out his lightsaber. Knowing that they're pre-gathering means these, these kids do not have sabers yet. Master Yoda can help the other Jedi. You can't leave, Garen. The Kaiba clan needs you. I need you. You're my only friend. Oh, poor Obi-Wan. That's not true. You're loved in the clan. So much so. But if it weren't for you... No. You've earned your place yourself. But tell me, Obi-Wan. These dreams of my father, which are just as real as any moment in reality, tell me you wouldn't do the same. Goodbye, Obi-Wan. May the Force be with you. Garen! Coruscant is a city, pilot, city planet of layers, level upon level upon level, almost never-ending, a metropolitan abyss. At its highest pinnacles lay gilded privilege, at its bottom, unimaginable horrors. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I keep forgetting to do it as Obi-Wan. At its bottom, unimaginable horrors. Even at my age, I knew that Garen Rand would not be able to get off the planet from its peaks. A Jedi youngling would simply not be able to stow away among the wealthiest officials and castes of Republic society. She would likely seek her escape lower, which meant I have, might have an opportunity to stop her before she did something foolish and possibly got hurt. Therefore, I did something foolish as well, with great risk of getting hurt. I broke the temple code, but I did it for a good friend. Obi-Wan's always had that in him. She was fast, agile, but even after I lost sight of her, I continued to search for her for what felt like hours. I tried to remember what little training I had. I reached out with the Force and followed her as best I could. What I'd said to her was true. She protected me, guided me. In times of indecision, uncertainty, conflict, Garen was always there. She was strong. She protected me like none other had in my life before. I could not let her go. I had indeed faced a battery of tests within the temple. Quite grueling at times, really. But that night, I experienced my first true challenge. Hold it, the runt! Translated from Hatties. That was when I tried something... When I tried something that up until then I'd only studied in texts. I... I am... Of no use to you. No value. Nice. Obi-Wan's first mind trick. I'm here for it. Duh. Something meant to... Realign the weaker minded. He's... Of no value. You moron. He's clowning your head using a Jedi mind trick. All right, then. I don't want to hurt any of you. <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's go. Hey! I beckoned, and the Force answered. In those seconds, I felt like I was in water, but not yet fully able to swim. Still, I managed to stay afloat. Nice. This is great. Ah! <laughs> If only for a moment. That's my friend, you nerve herder! Oof! Nice. Good job, Garen. Stop! All of you. Oh, whoa. Okay, Zabrik time. Stop. All of you. Young Garen Rand. I pay good credits for these men. Well, decent credits. Then tell them hands off, Nodris. The Zavrak's name was Nodris K. Garen had encountered her maybe an hour previous. Alright, so they've just, only just met up. I didn't know it at the time. I didn't know it at the time, and if you'd explained it to me then, I wouldn't have understood. But Nodris K was a high-ranking lieutenant in the criminal organization Black Sun. Oh. Are you okay? 
Fine. Odd new friends of yours. You're my friend. Nodris is just helping me get off-world. We're both smart enough to know she won't do that for free. What does she want in return? Insightful little Jedi. It's Aiden Silver, worth more than a month of smuggling spice, I'll tell you. Is that what you've been hiding under your mat? It's from my family. You know you can't keep it. Master Yoda said we must avoid attachments. Well, I'm getting rid of it now. I can save my father with it. Then I'm coming with you. Damn brave little Obi-Wan. He's willing to risk it all for himself just to help a friend. You know, friendship is so important to him, and that's why what happens with Anakin cuts so very deeply. The decision I had made had not come from conviction. Still, I managed to convince Garen I should accompany her. I could not imagine a life without her kinship, her comfort. But as we approached the ship, I grew more and more unsettled, and not just because of my recent hasty choices. Well, I mean, it's it's it shows that he still has a kid's logic too, because he's trying to warn Garen off of having any sort of an attachment by ha by keeping her family's necklace, and here he is going heads going head first into his attachment to his friend. He's not practicing what he preaches, but he's a kid. He doesn't. He's learning it, you know. Obi-Wan, are you sure you want to do this? You don't? Something's wrong. Hey! Stop! Uh-oh. Aiden Silver was more than enough when I thought you were just some street rat, Garen Brand. But then you and your chum here put on quite a display of keen ability. You know how valuable two Force-sensitive children will be in my service? Up the ramp, kiddies! What? You're going to enslave two children? Come on. Garen, I'm afraid. Focus. The two of us. Together, we're more powerful than they realize. Awesome. That's what you get for using uh, shitty binder cuffs. Garen, jump up this time. We're totally lost. No. The stars. We can follow them back to the temple. What stars? They're there. Trust me, I told you. You just have to know how to look. Let's get back to the temple. No, I can't. Just admit to me that you're afraid. This is fear, Garen. That's what this is, and you're giving into it. I have to help my father. I'm sorry. Take care of yourself, Obi-Wan. I know you can. May the Force be with you, my friend. And you, Garen Rand. Using the, using the stars as my guide, I returned to the Jedi Temple alone that night. But I was joined by another almost as soon as I returned. Gone, she is. I, I tried to get her to stay, but... In your youngling clan. Kept you safe, she did. Watched over you. Do you know who will keep you safe now? Obi-Wan Kenobi. You. Think on this, you will, tonight. While this wisdom is still new to you. <laughs> but you still snuck out, so you still gotta sweep the whole damn temple. Here you go, kid. <laughs> Qui-Gon's totally proud right now. Ah, uh, Woodsy, you're right. Can someone who cares for Obi-Wan not leave? Yeah, that's that's the theme for his entire life. Also, you can see here that he's always kind of had a thing for blondes. Looking at you, Satine Kreez. Think on this, you will, tonight. While this wisdom is still new to you. I never saw Garen Rand again. I do not know what became of her, or whether she was able to save her father. My only hope is that she did not succumb to her fear. Just as I was, just as I hope to continue holding back my own of what is to come. To be continued. This was awesome. This was a really fun little story, and it had some really like significant moments in it. We got to see Obi Wan do his first mind trick. That's awesome. And I really like the format of old Ben journaling his his many many adventures as he sits and waits for Luke to come of age. Like the perfect storytelling device for this. And like I said in the beginning, it reminds me of the uh, the young Indiana Jones story because that's how they did it. They had Harrison 
in some cabin, and then it would cut to the young guy. Oh, awesome, we're getting Qui-Gon in the next one. Hell yes. Oh, and some kind of crazy wolf thing, so I wonder how Dave Filoni's involved in this. <laughs> next month, issue two, on sale in June. Yeah, this was awesome. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's been a good Star Wars day so far, and it's just going to get better and better from here, too. Um, Star Wars issue 23 was totally killer. Um, Obi-Wan number one, off to a fantastic start. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this series. And also, the Kenobi show. We got an amazing trailer for that this morning. Um, and next up on my list of things to do is I'm going to go hang out with Ronan Unchained on his stream, and we're going to be talking Star Wars for about the next hour or two. Starting around 2.30 or 3, I'll post on Discord um, to keep you guys in the loop about when that's going down. Um, and then I'm getting together with Bendu online, and we're going to watch the Disney Gallery episode for the Book of Boba Fett. I'm super excited for that, too. Um, it's just going to be a good Star Wars day. So, however you guys are choosing to celebrate the rest of your Star Wars day, I hope you have a great time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's all we got for Comics with Katarn. And I'll see you guys soon on Ronin Unchained stream. Thanks again, and as always, may the Force be with you. Ah! <laughs>